You didn't just win. No one I know has ever beaten Gordy's Goats. That is a monumental achievement, detective. Hello there everyone, I am Big Bear. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. I've been looking forward to getting back into this next episode because we can now speak to the victim and hopefully we're progressing the main storyline as well. Let's get straight back into it. Oh, wait a minute. There's this cold coffee in an ashtray that looks like a hedgehog. Okay. Look a handful of dried white flowers. Just as you look at the flowers, a gust of wind raises them from the roof. Picking them up in the air. Oh, hand tie coordination. You catch a single white flower between your fingers. The rest fly off into the wind. It's a Maybell. Why do I need flowers? The young woman looks at the Maybell in your hand. Just a glance. Then takes a drag of her cigarette. The lieutenant gives you an acknowledging little nod. Uh, snap your finger pistols at the young woman. <laughs> snap your finger pistol at them. Your 9mm semi-automatic finger pistols produce a satisfying snap. Strange for such a low caliber finger gun to sound so chunky. The flower in your other hand is impressed. So is Kim. So we impressed Kim with finger guns, did we? That's not entirely true. The lieutenant is looking at the door to the east. And mostly misses them. Ah. What, uh... Tried Maybells, what is going on? This is the wildfire you caught, one of a bouquet of Maguayas that you found on the whirling roof. Sharing in... Okay, well, we'll interact with that later. Anyway, right. To the Welcome victim. To the roof. Speak to the assault victim. Excellent. The young woman has a cigarette in one hand and a cup of coffee in the other. Her hair is still slick from the shower. I'm sorry for the mess down there. The cleaning lady hasn't come by in days. I'm beginning to wonder if she ever will. Uh, is there a cleaning lady? I think I need one. <laughs> proceed politely. Uh, no, proceed politely. Oh, yes. Legends of room number one have made their way around the building. They say a portal to hell has opened in there. <laughs> Uh, it has Disco Infernum, hell, you know not of which you speak. There are vortices of dark energy present, but not to hell, to other place, the third place, much different from our world. No, I just trust the police. I know. That's probably also why the cleaning lady quit. Uh oh. I'm Kim Kitsuragi. I'm a detective from Precinct 57. I believe you have already met my colleague from Precinct 41. Have I ever? This is the biggest fan of ostentatious orchestrations I have seen in my life. And I have seen a few. Oh yeah. Life gets hard, but we go on. The chorus of the 35 single, megaphoning the entire human race, instills you with the fuck it all swagger that prompts one to plow into grannies on your morning stroll. Uh, it's gotten pretty hard in the meantime, but I go on. How long do you think until the hard uh, until the hard wears us down? Uh, things are only getting easier for me and my policeman. To do 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 do. Uh, I've found something more downbeat for my next appearance. Uh, whip out the tape of smallest church. Ah, okay, why not? That's the one, the small sad church song. I've missed it. I really have. You have why? The small, sad church song tells it like it is, Detective. Sad. Miss, we are investigating the murder of the man down there. The people who put him there have asked us to talk to you. Ah, oh, I see. She takes a pensive drag on her menthol cigarette. What could she be thinking of? It's hard to say. Her shoulders are relaxed, her eyes on the cigarette. What's your name, miss, for the record? Clausier Amondu. And where are you from? Vredefort, Republic of Oranje. Wasn't the tattoo on the hanged man on Oranje's map of the waterways? The thought begins to form in your head, then dissipates. Something for later. Okay, interesting. Uh... A bad memory, officer. Bad memory of what? Of lilacs and lightning. 
parks, glass, dura aluminium. Fort is a conference city. It's always autumn there. And night, at least it was for me. What's so bad? Nothing. Oops. If you're no longer there. My bad. Uh, what's so bad about that? Nothing if you're no longer there. Okay, how old are you? I'm 28. She takes a drag of her cigarette, of course. Uh, what do you do, miss? What is your specialization? Something stupid. And what's that? Orani's lit. Orani's lit? Orani's literature. It's what I studied at the university. What is Orani's literature about? Fear of failure, fear of death, how it sucks to be Orani's. All national literatures are... Only the name of the nation changes. Orani's lit, what do you do with it? Nothing. I do nothing with it. Okay, how do you make money then? Money's important, sure, some money. Cool. I've made more money by just being than I have with Rani's lit. Being what? Many things. A roller skating instructor, a secretary, Miss Rani at 37. <laughs> she was? Of course she won a beauty pageant. She's very symmetrical. Uh, can we please take a look at your passport? I'm afraid you can't. Officer. Why is that? Because it's buried in a sealed plastic bag at an undisclosed location on the coast, along with cash and airline tickets. Oh. Thank you for your candor. Why? I say so in your tourist brochure. Keep travel documents away from your person when west of the river. I'm pretty sure I have a legal right to demand your passport, miss. Look, officers. I like this place. But I don't want to be stuck wandering the city like a ghost after being robbed of my travel documents. Fair point. I don't want to become an indentured servant in a brothel on Boogie Street. And I don't want my relatives to pay the ransom. There are plenty of other reasons for hiding your documents from the law. Uh, that's not why you hid it, though. It's also why I hid it. <laughs> it's also why. Why yes. He's suddenly very tentative. I'm an unpopular girl. There are people back home who don't like me. If they show up, I'm in a hurry. The kind of hurry where you can't afford to not find your documents. But don't worry. This has nothing to do with your investigation. What kind of people are these, the ones that don't like you? I would love to change the subject. It's not important. Unless I'm some kind of suspect. Uh, no, we've just come to talk. Phew. Uh, how do I know you've told us your real name? If I were to lie to you, I would come up with a more mainstream name than Clausier Mondu. It's a weird name. Fair point. Okay, then. Okie dokie. If any of this made her nervous, it certainly doesn't show in her expression or her movements. Thank you, that's it for the record. The record? So official. Uh, nice room you've got here. Yeah, it's pretty deluxe. Uh, what are you doing here in the Whirling in Rags? I'm wintering. She's starting to annoy me a little bit. How long have you been staying here? About four months. I came in November. And why here? Here in the Whirling, here in Martinez, or here in Ravishol? Uh, let's start with the Whirling and work our way down. Because it's the funkiest building in Martinez. And because all the other buildings are bombed to hell. You have quite the collection of prescription drugs down there. Thank you. I've put a lot of time and effort into it. She says that without any discernible irony. Technically, possession of narcotics is legal in Rivershaw, but you should still reprimand her. Narcomania has nothing to be proud of, miss. It was quite impressive. How did you amass such a horde? Uh, Narcomania has nothing to be proud of. <laughs> what did you say? You heard what I said. Narcomania is a serious issue and nothing to scoff at, miss. <laughs> oh my god. Now it's turning into narcomania. It's got to be serious if it's two words. <laughs> I'm sorry. What did it... What, uh, oh, never mind. Uh, the collection includes na nacra uh, and opioid anti... You seem to have, among other things, preptide. Uh, what about the preptide? Oh, yes. One of my favorites. It cures many ailments. Like? Like 
not being able to stay up for 36 hours, not being happy. It cures those ailments. It's just a mirrored speed molecule, basically. Uh, Nacra? Comes in handy when you've done too many opioids. Is that something that happens to you often, miss? This tool isn't, isn't aggressive, just inquisitive. Better safe than sorry. Cool, I took some for personal use. Uh... Huh? Motherfucker took my preptide? Looks like you owe me one, officer. I'm talking serious corruption here. This does not amount to actual corruption. I can easily log it under confiscation. There you go, Kim. Robbed by common highwaymen. It's hard to tell if she means it in earnest or as a joke. Hey, I have other questions for you. Okay. Watching herself reflected in the bedroom window, tall and sparkling and draped in smoke. I need to talk to you about your room again. Nope. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. All right. Where did, what, why did it give me the option to talk about a room again? Uh, they tell us you were raped. Oh, God, that's a bit blunt, isn't it? It's a bit early in the morning for raped, isn't it? It's not that early. What does that mean? Where are you? Where are you? Are we questioning this? I thought that's why the guy got hanged. Yeah. I'm going to go with not raped. I can't say that stuff about him. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what? Tell them it's not my style. They'll have to, you know, if they want to jazz up the charges, they'll have to get someone more, uh, rapeable. So she wasn't then. So Titus and his gang hanged the guy on the premise of him supposedly raping her, but now she's saying she wasn't. Oh, this is gonna... Well, this should be interesting. By they, she means the Hardy Boys. So they're just making shit up then? Are you saying that you were asked to tell us you were assaulted? Not explicitly, but I understood what they meant. It wouldn't hurt to spice things up a bit. Some assault and battery. Sexual assault, maybe. It was clear the latter would be spicier. Okay, Titus asked you to spice things up for us. Uh, are you sure you weren't raped? What's, what, what did happen between you and the victim? Oh, okay, we'll just start from the top again, as usual. Um, what can you tell me about him? Name, age? And then what we think that uh, the guy's tattoo was from where she's from as well. Pretty much. Warming them. Are you sure you weren't? I didn't ever want to have to ask somebody that again, but... I'm 89% sure. Oh, this is getting stupid. So you're not entirely sure. Does that mean you're 11% not sure? You know how it is. Do you? Do I? Actually, I don't. Hmm. Maybe you don't. The ash lands on a jumpsuit, she brushes off. There are numerous cigarette burns on those silvery scales. Easy to see now that you're closer. In conclusion, officer, I'm gonna go with a mild to medium not raped here. Sex assault is a serious matter. I need a serious statement from you. It sounds like something happened and you don't want to acknowledge it. Lieutenant, uh, I don't know what to say about this. Uh, yes, sex assault is a serious matter. Serious. What is up with this lassie? You hear cracking in her shoulders. Let me make this 100% clear then, officer. I was not sexually assaulted. Would I be this flippant if I had been? Okay, that's better. Um, what did happen between you and the victim? We partied. <laughs> uh, we partied. Where have I heard that before? So is that like she partied with Titus? You mean like a birthday party? What kind of partying? Point to your bloated face. The kind I do. I don't get it. What do you mean partied? Wait, partied. Where have I heard that before? A lot of partying going on. From Titus. About her and Titus's relationship. That's where you heard it. I don't get it. What do you mean, parties? We drank, sir. A lot. For weeks, basically. We had that effect on each other. We made each other drink harder. That's why I liked him. What else? Stimulants. Speed also has that effect. Making you drink harder. And then drinking harder makes you do more speed. It's quite the combination. 
We also had sex. Uh, you were lovers. Were feelings involved? Understood. You were lovers? I guess you can say that, yes. A bit. Lovers is such an emotional word. But there was something there. We did enough drugs for there to be. Okay. How did you two meet? The lieutenant's voice is quiet and calm. Downstairs. At the bar. He was on some sort of assignment. Uh, a military man, as you probably know. Had a cool, scary scar. When was this? A month ago? Something like that. Must have been hard for you point to the yard seeing him there. Oh, yes. I've had a great view. From the roof, out of the bathroom window, in my dreams. Oh, God. A bitter cringe. It hurts. You look to the lieutenant. He takes a small step closer. You called us, DRCM. Was she the one that actually phoned and reported it? Yes. Jackpot. The call reporting the hanging, that was you. I made it. And I would appreciate it if you didn't tell everyone. In Martinez, they call it snitching. Wow. Reporting crimes is confidential in Ravachol, miss. Before we go, if it's snitching, then why do it? Uh, the caller's voice was disguised. I didn't exactly disguise it. I just muffled the mic and nicked the landline a little. Nicked it how? With nail clippers. And I diverted some radio fuzz into it. Into the cold wire. Which landline? The one downstairs, officer. I used the whirling landline. That's some clever tampering. Simple and clever. Crossing the lines like that. Seems like you had some idea. That was nifty. Thanks. She manages to smile. Why go through all the trouble? I don't know, sir. It was stupid. I was drunk, too. I was probably afraid the union was listening in. Locals say they have ears in the wires. Thank you for making the call, miss. It was the right thing to do. I didn't want to, sir. But if I hadn't, you'd still be hanging there. Well, that's true. Uh, what can you tell me about him? Name, eyes, age? I'm sorry, I can't do it. Not right now. Later, maybe. Oh. I keep seeing him. Like he is now. I can't talk about his... I don't know. Hair. Oh dear. I know it's difficult, miss. We can return to it later. Okay. Uh, what did they hang him for, if not rape? He had something to do with the strike. One has been roiling since I got here. Rotten timing. But you probably know all about it. And his role in the strike was... what? So I was thinking about saying something there, but I'm still trying to piece all this together then. Um... Uh, this is very informative and interesting. I think he was in a security detail. He was ex-military, worked for Wild Pines, and against the Union. We didn't discuss work much, if you know what I mean. But I understood it was dangerous. And they lynched him for it? She nods. Oh boy, how do the Hardy Boys know you? They're frequent guests. Downstairs, they have a booth for Union members. They're probably down there now. And how did you meet? Over drinks. It's been a long, boring winter. And did you party? A little, yeah. Like you partied with the deceased? No, not as hard. I'm sorry to have to ask this, but have you had a physical relationship with any of the Hardy Boys? I have. And which one? Which ones, sir? I don't remember precisely. Titus, obviously. But as I said, it's been a long winter. Okay, thank you for telling us all this, miss. She breathes a silvery sigh of relief and weariness. The air on the roof feels humid. Should we head by downstairs, officer? We may have things to discuss there. Yep, uh, I had something else before we go. Uh, a little thing. No, that, what? She nods. Silvery cigarette fumes disappear into her mouth. Vol Volition, look her in the eye. Uh, what is this wildflower? She looks at the dried petals in your palm, then lightly touches one with her fingernail. Chipped white polish covers the nail. It's long and sharp, like a mini dagger. The petal crumbles on contact. Pretty. 
Looks like a dried Maybell. Is that the one you caught? Sambo style? Uh, what Sambo? Why was it there? Sudden change of topic. Uh, what Sambo? The martial arts, sir. Hmm. Is that it? Samarin boxing, or Sambo. Graceful martial arts stuff. Sambo style implies stealth and cool. Oh, yes. Why was it there? Why was there a flower on the roof? I don't know, officer. Because of the wind? Okay, I don't think we're going anywhere with this. Uh, let's talk more about the so-called assault. Not my favourite topic, but okay. Nope, never mind. Okay, we've covered we, all that. You know, change the subject to something more light-hearted now. Okay, give me a wee second. Let me have a wee look in uh, Volition and um, just see if I can Why boost not? that for a quick second. I'll be here until 11pm. Drinking coffee, most likely. Right, give me a wee second. Oh, we need to speak to Kim as well. Nah, nothing apart from needing to put points into it. So I'll park it for just now and we can come back to it. You made the right call there. It feels good. Pure. About what? I'm talking about your zero tolerance policy toward the mania of narco. You're in the right there. Powerful stance. Would you like to take it up a notch? Would you like to become an anti-narcomania zealot? I'm pure, said fast, totally uncorrupted by narco. Yes, you're pure. Unravaged by narco. Of course, it's pretty obvious you've done a lot of drugs in the past. And will probably do more in the future. But that doesn't matter. You're right, I can't think of any objections. Of course not. You've always been anti-narco militant material. You kept her off a dark course with that interjection. Are you ready to... Save lives. I'm ready to start saving lives. That's good to hear. Uh, the lieutenant acknowledges your strange mumbling. He <laughs> does not have any narcotics visibly on him, uh, as he says it's good. Okay. Uh, oh, that reminds me. Um, so 46% wasteland of reality. <sighs> Still too physical instrument. Um, but I think I really want to open up a new instance of what is this one plus pain threshold that was pretty good stretch check seal bonus from thought what else are we getting speed yeah we're looking all right here i might oh minus one logic though that's a bit of a dilemma on that one i think i'll use one of my points to unlock uh opioid receptor antagonist what was that you can see it so clearly in the dark alley behind the what didn't you oh sugar wait a minute so we've got regular law off. Uh, let me have a quick look and I'll just decide what it is I'm going to go for next. Yeah, screw it. Let's go with opioid receptor antagonist and we'll take it from there. Oops. That was my bad. Uh, how many? Uh, oh, no. Okay. Sugar. I need 85 more for another skill point, but eh, I guess that'll do. Right. Next up. Uh, oh, yeah. What was going on with the door over here? The same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. Push where does it lead I don't to? know, Lieutenant Yefreter. He makes a note. It is not the first closed door we found in this building. There is also your mysterious blue kitchen door. Oh, has that got something to do with, like, investigating the whirling and rags tunnels or something? I don't know. The further we get, the more this building seems to be tied to the case. The vigilantes, the cadaver, and a number of people connected to the case are in or around this building. This door is part of it. It's not unimportant. So maybe the door below is a mega investigation. I could say something, but I'm not going to because I don't go. To he doesn't say anything. You should have gloated. Should I? I don't know. It is not the first. I don't know. The vigilantes, the cadaver, and uh, no, no, still a mini investigation. Ah, okay, it didn't do anything. Push. It's barred from the inside. You hear the bar rattle in the brackets. Sounds like it's heavy too. Very sturdy. Ah, oh, that's not going anywhere with my physical instrument at the moment. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll speak to Kimmy in here, I think. Just so that we've got some... Pri oh, yeah, I didn't uh, click on the window before. This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo. Run your fingers across the surface of the glass. Smooth as ice. There are spots of mud and rain on the outside even smudges but the surface of the window is clear from the inside no chips no hairline fractures following your lead the lieutenant leans in closer to inspect the surface 
This window was recently replaced. Looks like it, yes. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe something else we can speak to her about. Uh, okay, Kimmy. Looks like we have more to discuss with those so-called hardy boys. Half their reasoning just went out the window. You think this will make them cooperate? Nothing will make them respect the RCM. But it will disrupt the game they prepared for us. We just tripped off one layer of whatever it is. Her decision to not corroborate their story was definitely not part of the plan. Say in a hushed voice, why did she tell us all of that? What else could she have done? Lie? She saw there was no way to lie and get away with it. I'm not sure she had to lie, I wouldn't have known. If not you, then me. It was a smart move from her. She seems candid. You think so? Being candid is the best way to lie. The appearance of candor with some facts thrown in draws attention away from whatever one chooses to omit. Mm. She may be trying to control the pace of the investigation. Anyway, we should move. I suspect our inquiries will bring us back here soon enough. Okay, okay. Uh, just try Oops. No, 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 no. I don't want to go down there. I want to go down there. Okay, um, next up, are we going to go and speak to the Hardy Boys again? I also want to go and speak to the lassie on the boat. What was her name? Was it Joyce? I might just be making that up, but uh, yeah, well, I want to go and speak to her as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, oh yeah, can I do something with the window now? Maybe now that I've spoken to her? I, don't, I just find it very bizarre that it said it's not time yet. Oh, and I'm going to have to speak to everybody here again just to make sure I don't miss anything. Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. Uh -huh. Perception. So we can. That was it. We needed to go and speak to the... I was wondering about this. I, I, I don't understand, though. What relevance has the window got? Okay, perception. Give me a wee second. Okay, it was just me boots. Behind now, I'm going to... the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I'm going to do one of two things. If I'm unsuccessful, even though it's jumped up to 58%, I'm going to put a point into perception, just to boost this and get it done. There's a yellow ribbon tied to one Thank of the branches. Thank God. Light yellow, faded with time. A tiny splash of colour in the blackness of the thicket, hanging from it, a bronze key. Eh? Someone hid the key in the bush and attached a yellow ribbon to make it easier to find. It's close enough to the latch up there. One can slide it open and just take it. Surely not a coincidence. Someone hid a key in a bush. Huh? The guy looks behind him. I need you guys to hand the key to me. And I need the fatty to get his feet amputated because the smell is killing me. We can't always get what we want. God damn it, Dennis. You know I can't help it. Sorry, fucko. These guys won't help you. Looks like you're going to have to go bush diving. The Hawthorne's got a bitch of a bite. I'm gonna enjoy the sight of you in the bushes out there. With a loud thud, the old man stands up, pushes the window open, grabs the key from the Hawthorne branch, and slides it across the table to you. Oh, thank you. The key is brass. Workshop spare is etched into its bow. The old man closes the window and sits back down in silence. Come on, man. We were just having some fun. Where's the harm in? I'm tired of listening to your shit. Oh, he's not happy. Right. Uh, thank you, not to the old man. Don't thank me. I don't give two shits about your key. Okay, does anyone know why this key was hanging right outside the union box window? Didn't even know it was there. Boys. No idea. Never even seen it. Someone must have hidden it there before this room became our place. Uh, look at the key in your hand. I wonder what doors it opens. It could open the door in the kitchen. The blue door. It says workshop spare. Maybe there's a workshop there. Cool. It's worth a try. <gasps> okay. Drop everything. Let's go and see if this does actually open the blue door. I am intrigued. You see a heavy steel door. It yeah, could I know. be connected to the barred door upstairs. Oh, we think it could lead all the way up there. Try the workshop spare key on the door. The key fits the dimple lock. It takes a bit of effort to turn it after all these years. But then, 
the lock clicks. The darkness before you smells like engine grease and cut wood. Tally ho! Well, this is exciting. I didn't see this coming, to be honest. Whoops! Oh my goodness. The pinball says... Fa oh, I can't even pronounce that. The theme is horses and swords. This pinball is white. They are, oh, they're, they're pinball machines. I don't envy the spare key is tied to the bush outside the corner room window. <laughs> oh! Real as well. Over there, in the corner. The pinball machine? Not just any pinball machine. This is the pinnacle of pinball. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats. It's lit. You can't wait to get your hands on it. Come on, you seeing what I'm seeing? Point to the machine. Let's take a closer look. Pull out the machine. Ah, oh, great. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats reads the golden lettering on top of the back box. There's a small column of text underneath. The machine is coin operated. Get the game on, finger boy. Those flippers are ready. What on earth? Lean closer to read the text. Above the painting of a moustached man climbing a hill, a column reads, inspired by the legend of Cornelius Gordy, taken on the world's tallest peak, Corpus Windy. The mask legend holds that when the nation is in danger, heroic Gordy shall return and save his people. Inspect the playing field. The theme of the game is to explore Gordy's climb through the perspective of goats and to ascend to the top of the mountain in a time of trouble. The peak of the mountain is at the top of the playfield. All the balls have small goat icons on them and represent the goats as they race up and down the mountain. Areas around the playfield represent Gordy's climb, places he was said to have camped which the goats can discover. Get them to the summit. What's with all the goats? In indeed. Think of them as balls. Okay. Uh, well, we might as well give it a couple of shots. It takes a while to get into a rhythm. Get your Pretty pinball soon, on. You're able to keep three goat-faced balls in play with relative ease. Go, go, finger boy. I feel sorry for the gods. If they only knew the kind of guy old Cornelius really was. Uh, wait, what kind of guy was he then? The kind of a guy who uses the word savages a lot when recounting his travels. A mask nationalist. Uh, a racist mountaineer. An avid huntsman too. He was often photographed in his dining hall, surrounded by wall-mounted hunting trophies from every continent. That is not cool. He also hit his wife. And kids. Other people's kids, too. Sometimes pets. Hateful little men. But you seem to be having fun. He knows at the machine. I'm pretty good at this. Continue playing. Your game is definitely improving. The jolly goats are flying all over the board. And although a few plummet to their deaths, you're never left with less than three. Suddenly, a special passage leading to the summit slides open at the top of the board. This is where the balls need to go. Concentrate and aim for the narrow passage. Maneuvering a goat ball into a position for a perfect hit isn't easy. More fall to their deaths. But finally, the opportunity presents itself. One of them gets through. Booyah! Tiny hammer shatters something inside the machine. Something glass. The words, pale rupture, light up on the speaker panel and the machine starts filling with a thick milky fog something's happening congratulations this is where the game ends it's a cheap way of getting more money out of the players a stupid nihilistic finale there's so much fog you can barely see anything some is actually leaking out of the machine and one by one your goats start slipping disappearing into the milky nothingness this can be navigated. The balls leave almost imperceptible disruptions in the fog. Use them to calculate where they hit next. You're down to your last goat, going mostly by sound. Eyes are useless at this point, but that goat is something special. 
Five times you snatch him back from the jaws of death. Kim, it can be done, just watch. I am. I've seen it before. Played it too. You will eventually make a mistake and then it's all over. Oh man, so I can't boost my reaction speed. Oh, this is a red check and it cannot be retried. Well, might as well because I can't, uh, I can't impact it, can I? Give up winning suit. Why do they even uh, make these things impossible? Will I be able to come back and give it uh, another try? Ah, screw it. With automation like precision, you no keep way! the final goat ball in play, reacting to the tiniest stimuli, floating in the flow state. The fog is clearing, and suddenly the old speaker crackles. I, I have to say that is incredibly lucky. Get well, my lucky streak continues. Gordy ball is lit. Huh? A panel opens up at the top of the playfield, and a new ball charges downhill. It's larger than the goats and matte black. Cornelius spell the white letters running across the equator. So violent is its descent, it immediately knocks the last goat into the abyss. Then proceeds to bounce all across the board as if carried by some demonic otherworldly inertia. High score announce the speakers and the whole machine lights up. Then the flippers retract leaving a perfect opening for the gaudy ball to join the goats backstage. Cornelius vanishes, and the machine powers off. What was the, what was the benefit of this? That's amazing. <laughs> he says a little about Beth. I think I won, Kim. You didn't just win. No one I know has ever beaten Gordy's goats. That is a monumental achievement, Detective. <laughs> Who's the king of pinball, Kim? Hold out your fist. Congratulations, Your Highness. That was really impressive. Aww. The machine Thank you, needs Kim. good service before anyone else can even attempt it again. It's time to move on. Yes. Good times. Can you scold it in the mountain goats one last look? Good Once times. Once again, the machine becomes one with the dust and the darkness. Success. Right. Uh, was that literally our thought process already? Opioid receptor antagonist. Mm. Halt. Put down the pipe, scumbag. The knock is on the scene, and he's gonna tell it to you straight. Drugs are for losers. They fry your brain and rewire your circuits to self-destruct. And they make you masturbate too. Have a drink instead. Have two. Have three bottles of wine. It's impossible to masturbate after three bottles of wine. And remember, friends don't let friends get high. Or be sober. Peace out, little brother. I hope the bonuses were worth it. No positive effects from drugs. No negative effects from alcohol. No negative effects from alcohol. Maybe I should be uh, looking into this because I know I said I was going to play this as a clean run through, but. Mm. Anyway, never mind. Right, next. Uh, oh no, that's the staircase outside. Cool, so we just beat the pinball as well. Whoa. All these mesmerizing machines, just waiting to be plugged back in and played. Turn your finger across the dust of the white Diora machine. Feels like it might jump back to life any moment. The lights illuminating the white-robed woman. What's white Diora? Some kind of inane pinball theme. Probably related to Messina during the DeLorean age. The history themes are the worst. The lieutenant grimaces, looking at the machines. How about we fire one of these bad boys up and play some pinball? You can't fire them up. They are broken. Only that one machine in the main hall works. The Royalist Pinball. Uh, sounds like you don't enjoy pinball, Kim. No, I love it. I love pinball. Who doesn't love pinball? Let's move on. He doesn't. Encyclopedia! Kim, pinball, Kitsuragi. <laughs> exactly. That's what he's known as. His reputation precedes him. You're Kim Pinball Kitsuragi. So now he remembers. He looks at you in the silence of the workshop and takes his glasses off and cleans them. Fine. I'm Kim Pinball Kitsuragi, a.k.a. the Kimball. You remembered. Congratulations. You don't seem to really like Pinball. No human being should. 
It is a game that requires no skill and a childlike affinity to flashing lights and to fantastic science fiction and historic romance franchise. It is lame. Then why are you called pinball? I am not called pinball. It was used to taunt me a long time ago, before I became a homicide detective and got my lieutenancy. How did you... Fine. I was a juvenile police officer for over 15 years. It's how I started out in the RCM. Once I had to infiltrate a pinball ring, as you do when you are a juvie cop. Okay. It was not okay. I needed to become a pinball champion. I trained for nine months. The job was successful and I was moved out of the juvenile wing to homicide. End of story. You were a juvie cop for 15 years. That time is over now. I was already a 38-year-old man. It was unbecoming, as was playing pinball. Wait, so why didn't... You uh, why you didn't talk? Uh, so that's why you didn't talk to Kuno. It's best if you handle the juvenile delinquents. I'm going to call you Pinball now. I'm going to call you Kim Kimball now. Don't worry, I'll keep calling you Kim. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is good too. Now, we really need to continue our sweep of what appears to be a secret path through the world. Yes, indeedy. Couldn't agree more. This small elevator is dimly lit by a bulb that's been glowing for ages. The latticed cage is open inviting you to step inside. Look in. Smells of nougat and sweat. Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There is a control panel to your right and just enough room for two people to fit in. The maintenance card under the control panel reads, Last Maintenance, 10th July, 88. Uh, look at the elevator controls. There are large rectangular buttons, Monter, Descente, and an international call for emergency assistance. That third one appears to be broken. Oh God, I hope we don't get stuck in this. A small steel plaque reads Halter 800. Halter is a Koningsteiner lift company who went out of business a long, long time ago. It says the last maintenance was an 88. That it does. I say, let's brave it. This elevator was last maintained in the future. <laughs> 88, this elevator was maintained a long time ago. At the end of the last century. Look on the bright side. If it fails, we will only sustain minor injuries. I'm talking three, maybe four months in the hospital. Maximum five. Kem? It appears his whole enthusiasm is sarcastic. <laughs> I wonder what this elevator was used for. Seems like a small freight elevator for transporting machinery. For that, it's pretty quaint. He taps on the guttering light bulb. It's golden in the dark. Uh, close the door and go up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Small windows taped shut with black plastic you can't see outside. What the heck is all this? Boxes of tools and replacement parts line the shelves. Is somebody here, though? Schematics for a pinball machine. Uh, futurism themed. Ooh, one empathy plus one hand-to-eye coordination. Pinball maker's coat. Like it. The pinball machine has been taken apart and gutted. So this is where they brought 40 pinball machines to fix them up. A long time ago. Everything is covered with dust now. The lieutenant looks around the dusty, crowded room, inspecting the tools on the shelf. Looks like they gave up on fixing the pinball machines at some point. At some point, 20 years ago, 15 maybe, before pinball went out of vogue. This used to be a pinball workshop. Looks like it. I'm guessing Martinez North 22 used to be a pinball arcade before it became a hostel. There are machines left over. He taps his foot. A creak. Some dust falls off a shelf. Downstairs in the hall, next to the main door. One of them even works. I've seen one of the hardies bang away at it. Remember the dice maker? Then that means... Burlowing Rags was once the East Delta Pinball Arcade. This is all left over from ah, that. Ah, yes. As the novelty dice maker said, this has absolutely nothing to do with the case, I'm sure. But I do like a nice little connection. Oh, that reminds me we need to go and collect our dice. But then it went bankrupt. Your skin crawls from making the connection. Could this mean the Burlowing Rags really is part of the Doom commercial area? If that's true, then our cafeteria manager is not going to like it. We should tell him what we found up here. Omitting that suspicion. 
He does not appear to be the kind of man who likes his establishment to be part of a neighborhood ghost story about mm. bankruptcy. Stupid superstition. But still, it would be interesting to see what the cafeteria manager thinks of this. So we need to go and speak to Gart about this as well. Uh, finish thought. Okay, okay. Ne footprints. You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. Jackpot. These, unlike everything else here, are new. Someone's been here within the last week or two. Three weeks maximum, from the dust cover agent. It could easily have been one week, too. You know, officer. He looks at you. This is so good, it makes him forget the whole Kimball memory. The blue door was a mega investigation, after all. It has no converge with our main investigation, which I would say is quite large. Has it? Though, what, what does this mean? Okay, um, on that thought as well, um, so as I say, we need to go back to the dice maker, but uh, go and speak to Joyce, and uh, what else do we need to do next? Anyway, we'll finish this train of thought, and then we'll get there. So what does this mean? It means someone snuck through what seems like a secret route behind Classio's room in the recent weeks. This may prove to be significant. Oh, that, that was the other train of thought I had. Uh, we need to go back and use Kim's radio to ask about the armor and report the dead body on the uh, pier. Sorry, I'm just uh, citing that because I'm remembering stuff that I intended to do in this episode. Uh, let's have a closer look then, crouch and study the footprints. This is where I'm good. Large prints, most likely made by boots. The size is hard to determine. Soul could be bigger than vamp. The souls have left a pattern, uniform, horizontal lines. One person has been here. They've gone back and forth. The tips point both ways. Shoe size is 41 to 42, maybe 43. It could be a large-footed woman or a small to average-footed man. This is, unfortunately, the worst, most vague shoe size there is. A prince looked like one person went back and forth. Between that and that. He points at the elevator door in the corner, and he points to the barred door. Oh, is the barred door the one that's upstairs in that lassie's room? This print doesn't look like the odd sold print we found at the hanging, Kim. The size looks about the same, actually. They're not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. This doesn't look like the worker's boots from the hanging, no. does it? No. These little horizontal lines are different. They look custom-made to me. Or some kind of foreign print. Hard to say. Still a boot, though. Okay, get up. Everything around you is quiet. The prints crisscross the workshop floor. Let's move on. There's a tiny hole in the wall. You see a bedroom on the other side. Oh, somebody's been spying on her. This is the inside of the barred door you've seen before. So what's on the other side? Unless we've veered off into a folded M dimension, I'm expecting to step out on the roof. We could ask Class here about this route. See how she reacts? Folded M dimension. A reference to the popular science fiction series, In System. Look who's in a good mood suddenly. Okay. And reads science fiction. Unbar the door. Is that it? Hello. Officer, what brings you up here in the rain? Uh, shoot, okay, I can't do that one at the moment. Can I talk to you more for the record? Sure. The Wait record. Yeah. Oh, uh, about a room again. That was the option. Uh, the road they're appointed. Did you know it uh, leads to a downstairs elevator? I did not. Mystery solved then. I kept wondering where it led. Yeah, but somebody's peering at you through the wall. There may be more to this mystery at some later time. She's holding back. Let's make a mental note for now. There's a peephole on the other side looking into your bedroom. A peephole? You mean like a hole in the wall? Yes, looking into your bedroom, miss. Oh dear. Okay. I suppose as she processes this information, this is kind of effed up. Digital fear and disgust moves through her body, beginning from her shoulders and ending in her hips. The cigarette tastes foul to her now. Do you think this is somehow connected to me? It could be connected. Okay. Do you have any way of knowing how long it has been there? Unfortunately, no. But if I were to guess, 
Long enough. The perforation is under the bookshelf on your wall. It should not be hard to cover with some tape. If it is recent, uh, who do you think made it? Shit. I don't know. Maybe it's been there for a long time. Maybe the local kids use it or something. I don't know. I'll be fucking covering it up with a lot of tape, that's for sure. Was there anything else back there? Uh, there were tracks on the floor of the recent. Huh. This isn't good. What does she know that we don't? She's straight as a stick, suddenly. Come on, it's an old pinball workshop, the room back there. This place used to be a pinball arcade. Okay. I'm glad someone's had fun. That's all for now. Mm-hmm. She fixed the ash from her cigarette absentmindedly. Um, okay, that window is new. It is. She moves slightly to your left to check her reflection in it. An evasive maneuver. Ask a follow-up. When was it changed? During your stay? Yeah. I'm trying not to lie to you here. Stop making it hard. Then tell the truth. The truth is, I'm a horrible girl. Windows break around me. It's not their fault. Uh. You hear the scribbling. Of the lieutenant's pen. Feels like success. I have other questions for All you. Right. Okay, can't do the volition at the moment. Um, we'll return later. Okay, um, you know what? I think I'm going to leave this episode here because I've only got five minutes left. And uh, I'm trying to think about where we're going to go with this now. I guess we should really go and speak to Gart. We need to go and speak to the Hardy Boys again. As I mentioned, we need to go and use... You know what, actually? Let's have a quick... You know, give me two seconds. We'll nip down and use Kim's radio for a moment and then round off the episode. Okay, pick up the radio again. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Oh, yeah. Also, I told Kim and he told me to phone the Lazarus. Is that with regards to my health, then? Okay, let's get that out of the way first. It will take just a moment, officer. Her voices fade out into the familiar radio static. <laughs> Gottlieb, what do you want? Uh, next, Scotland. He's carelessly chewing on a piece of hard candy. Uh, just want a routine checkup. I was told to call the Lazarus. People are worried about me. Uh, I'm in a bad way, Doc. A real bad way. Um, people are worried oh. about me. It's you. Yes, it's Firewalker here. I think I've had a heart attack. Um, I've lost my memory, all of it. Doc, something is broken. <laughs> Some, someone's broken my heart. Isn't there anything you can do for me? Uh, I've lost my memory. With all, all the it. damage you've been dealing yourself with drugs and alcohol, I'm not surprised. You're not surprised, okay? Anything else? What else? I'm not a brain doctor. Look on the bright side. You've got a whole new life now. Use it wisely. That's, that's a good way of looking at things. It's hard to say if he doesn't believe you or doesn't care. Yes, it's Firewalker. Firewalker? Oh, yes. Yes, you are. Just don't breathe in the general direction of your fire feet. Actually, wait. Do exactly that. Put yourself out of your misery. Take a deep, diaphragmatic breath in and... I feel like you're making fun of me. I'm the most serious person at the station, detective. Now, do you have any current pressing medical problems? I think I've had a heart attack. Do I think I've had a heart attack? I don't think I have. And you survived it. Congratulations. Are you mobile? Yes. Even better. Anything else? I wouldn't worry about that. Officers your age have coronary trouble all the time. Also, death is a natural part of life. This guy's not a very good doctor. Accept it. The body is an object, and objects break down. Do what good you can with yours, before the rest goes to... Doc, someone broke my heart. Look, pal, getting pumped and dumped is not a disease. People live through it all the time. You should be happy for her. What? Do you know who this person was? Have I told you? You must have me confused for a close personal friend. I am not. I am a medical professional with a constant idiot emergency on my hands. One needs tending to right now, he thinks, looking around the room. God, these apes. You hear someone whine in the background. My eye, Doc, my eye. Is there anything you can do for me? What? You want me to do blood work for you again? Tell you just how bad things really are across the board? You want another rundown of everything collapsing inside your body? <laughs> no, that doesn't sound like something I can handle right now. I see your point. Might as well just get back to work. Do that. I need to go. Some idiot 
has glued his eyelids shut with cyanoacrylate. It looks like MacTorson, but it's hard to say because his eyes are swollen. Well, that guy's an idiot. It's not fucking cryoactylate. It's super glue, Doc. Okay, so that's up for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, good, more experience. Anything else I can help you with, officer? Hey, perfect. Um, connect me to the Jam Rock Public Library. Hold on, officer. I've got Central Jam Rock Public Library on the line, and I've already introduced you to their librarian. Connecting the call in two, one. Why are we phoning the library? Yes, this is Central Jam Rock Public Library here. How can I help you, officer? Uh, you can bribe me on Billy Majon, a reader. Billy, Billy Majon, you said. Give me a moment, I'll have to check our database. He puts down the receiver. Yes, hello, are you still there? I found Billy Majon's home address, is that alright? No phone number, unfortunately. They're too poor to have a phone line. Yes, home address is fine. Here we go, sir. Rue de saint Gislaine, 33B. Apartment number 20. It's in Martinez, I believe. Capeside Apartments, it says. That's oh! Of course, because we got the library card off the dead body. I'm an idiot. That's where the smoker on the balcony lives, isn't it? Uh-oh. Do you have any other information on Billy Magion? It says here that they returned their last book just a few days ago. But I wasn't at work that day. Uh, do you know who... someone who was? Marie? Marie? Do you remember a reader named Billy Magion? They returned a Tibalt book the other day. You hear someone answer from afar. Maurice, what? A woman yells. Then, yes, yes, okay. If it was the police, she starts explaining something. Yes, it, it was my colleague Marie. Uh, she said that it was Billy's husband who returned the book. He also asked for this new sci-fi release, Lowe's Radio City 87. But we don't have it yet. Uh-oh. Good. You have a name now. So, Billy Majon is a woman, not a man. How did your colleague know that it was her husband? Marie knows Billy. She's been working here longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. Uh-oh. Do you know the husband's name? Sorry, no. Marie only knows him by sight. Uh, can Marie describe to me what the husband looks like? Marie! She said it was an older man, and that she's pretty sure he'd had a drink or two the last time she saw him. Uh oh, what was he wearing? Uh, one second. Well, he turns away from the phone again and lays the question. Sorry, Marie wasn't really paying any attention to that. Thank you, that's all from me. I have no other questions. Happy we could help. Goodbye, officer. Anything else you need from me? Uh, I need to report a dead body on the Martinez board. Uh, one mark. moment. You can hear her shuffling through some can papers. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death. I don't know. Try that in English. An unidentified middle-aged man, height 170, 175 centimeters, dark hair, medium build. Looks like he slipped, fell through a hole in the boardwalk, and hit his head against the metal bench. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him, and traces of vomit on his shirt. Oh. Any signs of violence? No, it seems like it was an accident. No field autopsy necessary. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? He was wearing boots, trousers and an old leather jacket with a bright blue lining. I found a library card from his pockets. Any information on the library card? Central Jamlock uh, Public Library it belonged to someone named Billy Majon. Oh, good. You have a lead. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case or should I assign it to someone else? We're taking the case. I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? Okay, okay. Uh, did you find out more about the owner of the armored boots? Sorry, sir. I still haven't heard back from the database people. Try calling again later. Is there anything else I can do for you? Oh, what you said today. 57th, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers. Okay, that'll do. Okay then, that was progress for the sake of progress. We've managed to 
really pull out a couple of things, uh, pull a couple of things out the bag, should I say, um, and knock it out of the park. Yeah, so we've now spoken to the victim who wasn't actually a victim. The Hardy boys we still need to go and speak to again. We've ticked a number of boxes and somebody was spying on that lassie in the back passages of the Whirling and Rags as well, which is interesting. But we will get all that in the next episode. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, hit that like and subscribe button. This is Big Bear signing off, but there will be another video. See ya!